Hey everybody, welcome back to my recording internship. This is a new segment called Mondays with Marshall. Uh, I'm going to be here going over some not so much um, recording engineering ideas, but more uh, music theory related and a lot of guitar techniques because that's what I know uh, the best. Um, so. What I'm going to go over today is the seven patterns of the major scale. Now I find a lot of guitarists never really get around to learning these because it does involve a little bit of memorization. But the good thing is once you, once you learn these, um, a whole new world of music theory opens up to you and you'll be able to understand uh, things like chord progressions, uh, harmonization, soloing techniques, and just a whole whole host of um, the rest of music theory becomes accessible to you once you get these patterns down. Um, so the idea is to really um, get a handle on these before uh, moving on to more advanced concepts. And it just depends on how much time you want to put into uh, uh, learning them. But you could learn all seven of them in one evening if you really, uh, you know, threw down and, and went for it. But, you know, it could take weeks or months if you're not as dedicated. But uh, me personally, I, I, did, I did learn them in one evening. So if I can do it, you definitely can. But here goes. The basic, the basic idea here is that... Um, you have seven patterns because there's seven notes in the major scale, seven notes in the diatonic scale. So um, if we're going to be in G major, for example, that's the third fret of the sixth string here. The eighth note being the octave. Um, now, it should be noted that the patterns are really set up for speed. Uh, the way that I learned them and the way my guitar teacher learned them was set up so that, you know, once you learn these patterns and you see the general direction of how the patterns are laid out, they're really built for speed. So the rule number one here is there's three notes per string for every pattern, no exceptions and your index finger and your pinky uh, first and fourth fingers are involved in every pattern. And the only thing that changes is the second and third um, finger fingering. So if I play the first pattern, it's gonna look like this. And back down. Now you might notice that there is a general directionality to that pattern. It's going from, um, it's going in sort of a diagonal pattern from this origin starting point here up to the top in sort of a diagonal motion. Now sort of the old school way of playing guitar patterns is to once you hit the B string, Some people want to go backwards like this. So they're effectively going, starting to go one direction and then switching and going backwards. Or maybe even worse, to go further back. Like that. And if you think of, think of this like um, the way a skier goes downhill, you know, if they want to slow down, they'll kind of zigzag and increase the distance that they're traveling um, in order to reduce their speed. But we're trying to increase our speed and our dexterity. So we want to go in as straight of a line as possible with as minimal um, impediment as possible. So let, let's, go, let's go from the first pattern to the second here and see how this shape is working.
Okay, I actually played all seven patterns for you there, but um, you might have noticed that the general direction that I'm traveling here is diagonal. So the less that I'm changing directions, um, the, the faster I can go. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to build up that muscle memory and that the less you exceptions you have to make, the less you have to remember. And you can sort of rely on these bare bones rules of, okay, it's always going to be three notes per string and I'm always going to be generally moving the same direction. And that way you're not, you're not having to change directions, you're not having to change your fingering. And as you really start to build up speed, those things matter because you're no longer having, having to remember those kinds of exceptions. So I highly recommend this approach. I know some of the fastest guitarists in the world, some have, who have the best technique, use these patterns. And I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but these patterns actually play really nicely into um, uh, how modal techniques are used in soloing. So um, I'll show you one more time how these patterns work. I'm, I'm actually going to put them in the description of, of the video so that you're able to see. Okay, now every one of the seven patterns of the major scale is going to be composed of three different fingering patterns. Three and only three. So they're going to look like this. Or like this. Or like this. And that's it. That's that's all you need to know. We're not going to we're not going to do any chromatic stuff or any extended Stuff. We're just gonna do three notes per um, per string in in that uh, in those three shapes. So, uh, also, I should note that um, the first note of the first pattern is the root of the key. So, if somebody says to you, if you're jamming out, and they go, "Oh, we're in the key of B flat," uh, all you need to do to know where your patterns start is um, find B flat and then start your first uh, pattern right there. Okay, now, as you start to get familiar with the seven patterns of the major scale, uh, you'll start to see, as you get more familiar with them, how the patterns interlock and work together. So you'll memorize each pattern uh, one at a time. But then you might start to go, okay, well, um, I have a one, two, four here in the second pattern, and that fits really nicely with the one, three, four of the first pattern. So you can start to link them together. See how that works? And uh, so that'll just be part of the progression you'll make as you start to learn this technique. Um, and that's the way that you can see someone like Steve Vai really traversing the fretboards because he's jumping across patterns, but he couldn't do that right away, obviously. You need to learn the patterns first. So let's go something like that and then. That way I just utilized three different patterns. So it's a really great way to familiarize yourself with the whole fretboard, but do it in a musical way. And um, one thing I find is that this is really the biggest stumbling block um, for going from a beginner guitarist to an intermediate or even an advanced one. Um, once you know those patterns, you'll be able to play in key anywhere on the fretboard because you have the patterns memorized and it's nice because you don't really have to know much about intervals or what exact note you're playing all you have to know is the uh, shape of the pattern so you get that down and your, your playing will start to become a lot more musical 
and you'll have a starting point for um, you know coming up with ideas for solos and eventually uh, chord progressions. So I highly, highly recommend you check this out. I mean, it's like the first um, stepping stone on towards becoming um, uh, an advanced player. So one more time, the seven patterns of the major scale. Thank you.